This video shows new features and bug fixes that libraries will see after our upgrade to Evergreen 311. What is shown is not an exhaustive list, and libraries may see additional features and fixes after the upgrade. There is now a password visibility toggle available to library staff when logging into the staff client. This is also available to patrons when logging into my account in the public catalog. Throughout Evergreen, you may notice minor changes to colors and the styling of pages. This is due to ongoing work to improve the accessibility of Evergreen. In the circulation module, a long-standing bug has now been resolved. The addresses of the destination libraries will now consistently print on transit and hold transit slips. There is also a new feature where you can add information about the sending library to the transit and hold transit slips. On this slip, the sending library and address will display. On the check-in screen, the strict barcode box has moved to be beneath the barcode field. We do not recommend checking this box unless you're doing a rebarcoding project and need to catch any barcodes that are not 14-digit codabar. When checked, a barcode that is not 14-digit codabar will result in this pop-up. The item status screen in list view now has a column for total circulations. This means you don't need to flip back and forth between the list and detail views to see this information. You can add the column using the column picker. Don't forget to save your columns if you want the column to display by default. The Holds Shelf Actions menu has been streamlined and actions that cannot be performed on holds on the hold shelf have been removed. The list of cancel reasons available when canceling a hold has changed. Options that are not relevant to staff canceled holds have been removed and two new cancel reasons have been added. Patron via email and patron via SMS. In the Notes tab on the Patron account, there is now an option to unarchive archived notes. Evergreen will now also ask you to confirm when archiving, unarchiving, and removing notes. In the staff catalog, search results now have color indicating where there are no physical holdings. Sometimes this will indicate e-resources, other times it will indicate orphan bibliographic records, which are records with no physical or e-holdings. We have an automatic process that deletes orphan bibs that are more than three months old. When searching the entire consortium, your reciprocal borrowing zone, or your system if you're a multi-branch library, the staff catalog will highlight where your preferred library doesn't have a physical copy. When using the shelf browse search, publication date is now included in the information that displays with your search results. The add item option in both the create new mark record interface and the mark edit tab of the record both now function as expected. When call number and barcode are filled in, they will appear in the equivalent fields when the Holdings Editor opens. Make sure you don't have pop-ups blocked for Evergreen, or the Holdings Editor won't open when you click Save Changes. The similar Add Item feature seen when importing via Z3950 does not currently work. In the Holdings Editor, for Item Notes, there is now an Edit button which allows you to edit existing notes. As well in the Holdings Editor, Holdings Templates will now export and import properly. The bug preventing patrons from emailing themselves a list from a basket has now been resolved. Once a patron has added records to their basket, they can click on the basket icon and select Email Title Details. Click Email to confirm that you want to email the titles in the basket. The email from the account will display and can be edited. A custom email subject can be added. 
the brief or full format can be sent. If patrons want to include holdings information, such as call number, they should select full. Patrons can decide how they want the list sorted. If changes are made, click Update. Click Email Now to send the email. Item statistical categories that are marked as OPAC visible will now display in your public catalog. We recommend libraries check their current item statistical categories ahead of the upgrade to see if any of them are set to be OPAC visible. In Evergreen 3.9, you can access the current statistical categories editor by going to Administration, Local Administration, and Statistical Categories Editor. If you do not want the statistical category to display in your public catalog after the upgrade, you can update the OPAC visibility to off. There is now a feature which enables you to add a note to your hours of operation. In Evergreen, go to Administration, Server Administration, Organizational Units. Find your library in the tree. On the Hours of Operation tab, click the Edit Note Field checkbox. This allows you to add a note to a particular day of the week. If your library has split hours, this is useful to note when the library is closed within the stated hours. Click Apply Changes. If you are a multi-branch library, you will need to do this for each of your branches. The information entered in organizational units displays in your public catalog and can be seen by clicking the library name under location in the search results. A number of administration interfaces have been rewritten in the newer code now used by the Evergreen community. These include cash reports, Patrons with negative balances, the Library Settings Editor, and the Statistical Categories Editor, which has now been split into Item and Patron. In the Library Settings Editor, the long-standing bug of certain hold settings not being visible has been fixed, and local system administrators can now see all library settings. Consult our documentation to see which settings local system administrators can update. When filtering for particular settings, you now do have to click the Filter button. The library setting Permit Renewals When Patron Exceeds Max Fine Threshold now works as expected. The Sitka default for this is false, so if you want your patrons to be able to renew items after they've exceeded your Max Fines threshold, you'll need your local system administrator to set this to true for your library. The Statistical Categories Editor has been split into two separate interfaces, so you can now handle items and patrons separately. Both interfaces look very different than the old Statistical Categories Editor, but have the same options. The Shelving Locations Editor now automatically filters out deleted shelving locations. Deleted shelving locations can be viewed by adjusting the filter for the Is Deleted column. Staff are also now blocked from deleting shelving locations that contain non-deleted items. In a course list, the Circulation Modifier column will now show the current circulation modifier. Under Course Users, the Role drop-down will now drop down as expected. Courses that have been archived can now be unarchived and used again. This is done by selecting the course and picking Reopen Selected from the Actions menu, or from within the course, clicking the Unarchive Course button. Previously associated course materials are not restored. Thank you for watching this video. 
For more information, please visit the BC Libraries Cooperative website.